Hello guys, in this video, I am going to talk about interrupts in AT51, the SFRs in, of interrupts in AT51. In my previous video, I have talked about UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, but I forgot to talk about what is synchronous, synchronous what exactly happens in synchronous timers. You can watch the previous video in the description. The link is in the description. Now let's talk about synchronous. In synchronous, the whole classroom or the uh, all of the students in the classroom have watch. They match their timings on their watch with the timing on the teacher's watch. And then they start writing the paper. And so when the uh, finishing time will be same as on the teacher's watch, and on the student's watch. This is what happens in synchronous timing. The microcontroller has a clock. This clock is synchronized with the clock of the peripheral device. So when the clock is zero, let's say, then data will be sent and at the same time there, the clock will be zero, then it will, then it means that the data is being sent from the, the other side. And when both are one, then it will mean that the data is being received from the other side. This is just a layman's term example. Okay. Now proceeding on to interrupts. Now, as you all know, all interrupts have vector address. Actually, everything has vector address. Why is it called vector? Because as you remember, vector has a magnitude as well as direction. Okay. So here there is something called as DPTR or data pointer, which points to a particular register so that is why we call we call it as vector because it's pointing or it is giving a direction and then it is an address that is there is some on that particular address something is stored some information is stored which the microcontroller has to execute now the int 0 bar or is written as I, ie 0 it has the vector address 0003h if you add 8 to it you will go to 000bh that is the vector address of TF0 or the timer 0. Then add 8 to it, you will move on to 0013H that is IE1 or that is interrupt 1 bar. Add 8 to it, 001BH that is TF1 or timer 1 and then finally by adding 8 you will move to 0023H that is RI or TI that is receiver or transmitter which is basically serial. Now we have interrupt enable register and interrupt priority register. First talking about interrupt enable register. This is bit addressable. Okay. Bit addressable SFR actually. You have EA, ES, ET1, EX1, ET0, EX0. How to remember this? If you remember this, you, are, you can easily remember this. This 0 is nothing but INT 0 bar. This Now this T0 is nothing but timer 0. This X1 is again interrupt 1 bar. ET1 is timer 1. And then ES is serial. What does E stand for? Enable. Okay. Now first thing we need to know is EA. This is very important. If for example, if EA is 0, none of this will work. Actually this whole thing will be redundant. If EA is 0, none will work. And if EA is 1, that means some of them, like uh, this will work, but only the uh, interrupt which you program will work. But this, I am not telling that all of them will work. Okay. Let me give you an example. For uh, Let's say if a house is locked from front, there is a lock hanging on a door, then it obviously means that no one is inside the house. But if the lock is open, then that doesn't mean that everyone is inside the house. It only means that someone may be inside the house or someone may also not be inside the house. It may happen that a thief has come here, opened the lock and he ran away. That can also happen. But lock open means someone may be inside the house or may not be inside the house. But if the door is locked, then it definitely means no one is inside the house. So that same analogy follows in interrupt enable register. If EA is 0, none of this will work. If EA is 1, then it will work only whichever 
interrupt u program then the next is es this es this serial interrupt as i told you t1 is timer interrupt this is int 1 bar interrupt this is timer 0 interrupt and this is int 0 interrupt if any of these is 1 okay i will draw a dotted line to come here if any of these is 1 then it means it is enabled if it is 0 any of these is 0 then it means it is disabled now let's talk about interrupt priority register okay one more thing this dash doesn't mean it's empty it means they are reserved pins now talking about interrupt priority register again as i told you if you remember the vector address you can definitely remember this so by the same analogy here zero this x0 will represent int 0 bar pt0 will represent timer 0 x1 will represent int 1 bar pt1 will represent timer 1 and ps will represent serial p means priority what this priority means is that if any of these is 1 then it means it has high priority and if any of these is 0 it means it has low priority if 1 then it means it will have high priority and if 0 it, mean, it means it will have low priority example if you set this pt1 equal to 1 and all others are 0 that it, then it means that this timer 1 will have higher priority as compared to all others though int 0 bar actually has the highest priority according to the vector address so this is all about interrupts vector address the interrupt enable register and interrupt priority register thank you